go. Hello everyone, so we're on the 26th of June 2023 and this is a GSOC Jenkins Docker base quick start weekly meeting. Um, how was your weekend? Ashutosh? It was good. I worked last on Friday. I worked on uh, let me On Friday, I worked on a lot of things. I uh, don't remember exactly, but uh, today also uh, I created a, a separate uh, branch for Maven example. I used a lot of uh, your uh, script and inspiration from your mm -hmm. Docker cool. file you created. Uh, but we'll see and, because we don't know yet if all the mentors will be okay with what I proposed. We'll see. Uh, sorry to interrupt. So. Uh, if you don't mind, we'll see quickly what we'll talk about today and we'll see afterwards if uh, there is something else that you would like to add. So I was thinking, of course, uh, that we should talk about the midterm presentation that will happen on July 6th. Uh, then we'll tell some words about the Dogs Office Hours Asia uh, that happened last week and the week before on Friday. Uh, then we'll talk about the Maven tutorial, uh, which you have started working on. Uh, we'll also talk about the repo because Jean-Marc uh, wanted something to happen within the repo. Uh, so we'll see if we can set it up. Uh, then we'll see that there is no pull request, uh, so to speak, um, yet to integrate into the master branch. Well done. And we'll talk about some of the 11 um, issues that are still open to this day. And if there is still some time, we could talk about plugins, and anything else that we'd like to address. So, um, sorry, I was just asking about your weekend and then you started to talk about the work you were doing. So we'll talk about the midterm presentation first. Jean-Marc, would you um, like to share with us a few introductory words about what is expected on the 6th of July? Well, on the 6th of July, uh, we expect a retrospective on what has been done in the past six weeks. So what has been achieved? Uh, what is the um, uh, so a demonstration? And uh, uh, basically to show and explain what has been done uh, and what is going to happen in the next uh, six weeks. So we, it's important that we have something to show. Yep. So, it's a 10-minute uh, presentation. Yeah, so lots of things to cram <laughs> into a 10-minute presentation, but that should be okay. But well, yeah, the, the, the trick is to distill to have only the the essence and to be very very efficient not trying to put too many information uh, yep. in it um so jean-marc would you like that we rehearse uh, whenever the material is ready to go so we can uh, it must say be what's... rehearsed yeah must on be rehearsed. Ashton's side, but i mean in a semi-public the mentors some of the mentors and actors to see what should be changed, what should be kept, and things like that? Uh, yes, it's uh, fairly obvious. So, um, sorry. <laughs> there, well, yes, but um, Ashuto should lead the effort. So, uh, have um, the, the list of the things he wants to talk to and that he shows and, and let us interact. Uh, in the uh, in the setup of the presentation, uh, then as I believe he's not a professional presenter and used yes. to these kind of things, uh, it's it's very important. It's only by rehearsing and and fine tuning the presentation, have it timed, uh, that we will get to something. A good tip. 
pro tip, especially as we're looking at different time zones, uh, is that uh, once the content, the slides have been settled, uh, that Ashutosh records himself. Uh, easy to do with uh, Google Meet and uh, uh, and, and he can play it back. For me, the most critical thing and um, seeing the timeline we have, we have only a couple of days left, is that we have something to show. And currently, uh, the demo or, or the content, what has been done is, is a little bit weak. So we need to work. Uh, on that, focus now on that and put a deadline uh, on, uh, on that. Looking at the calendar uh, that for end of the week, we need to have content, so material, and that Ashutosh can think on how am I go going to present that. We have the beginning of the week thereafter to fine tune the, the demo. Oh, we need to fix that. We need to fix that. Uh, and then there will be two days left to really work on, on the presentation itself, fine tune it, and so time will be sent. So this is, this is how I, I personally, personally see the timeline. This means that knowing where to focus the work, what is important, what is not important, what can be done later is critical. Uh, so just to so uh, just to come back on uh, on Friday, I closed quite some uh, pull requests. There were still some glitches, there were still some fine tuning that was uh, required. Uh, when there was still something that was not 100%, I preferred to merge the pull request and open an issue that we don't forget. The word issue is something that I have a fundamental problem with the, just the name. It's not an issue. It's just something to remind it's a task. So I prefer tasks, which is much more positive. Issue implies that there is something wrong. It's not something wrong at all. It's things we need to think and keep uh, in focus. So there are many items in the to-do list that have been opened that are just things that we know we need to deal with later. I also yeah. started, I also started implementing milestones. The milestones give a way to visualize what are the items we need to work on and focus and for what date. And you can also see the progress once these items are closed. So, so how did this you is, implement that? Uh, well, uh, we, can, we can show that at the end of the, okay. the meeting. And this is why I asked... I don't know who I am because Friday has been a little bit uh, overwhelming. Um, we can continue this meeting one hour afterwards uh, where we do screen sharing and where okay. we we'll really go into the, the... But if you have Ashutosh's um, um, repo open, Let's go. Uh, we, can, we can just... So I, I just quickly show the principle. So, uh, go on, you open the issue uh, tab. There you go. Oh, you have and milestones. There you have milestones. And so you have three items. Uh, so issues without milestones name is uh, self-explanatory. So the first milestone that I created to be discussed is minimal viable configuration, so iteration zero. And this is what we should discuss and review. And, and uh, so 
the first is doing the minimal to stabilize, to have at least something to show. This is where we now, still some work to be done, but this is the, the simple setup with a job running with the, the SSH keys. So what we've experimented up to now, we need to stabilize it, publish it. And there I have some, some ideas where I can uh, direct. Uh, milestones have deadlines, not deadlines, but uh, target dates. The other uh, milestone that I decided alone on Friday without discussing, I apologize for that, but I wanted to clean up everything that we have a good base to discuss today. The second one is really is one, is that we have a completed Java Maven project tutorial, everything ready, and this is for me the target that we need to achieve for the 6th uh, uh, of July. Because there, uh, the people will understand, will see practically what we want to deliver. What is the added value for the, uh, the community? Where are we heading? As a termination of the six first weeks, and on that we can build, and there are several directions we can go for the for the second part. So if you click on minimal viable configuration, there you will see what are the items uh, that are. Um, I need to always concentrate to use items and not issues, but. <laughs> Uh, these are the one that I um, created. So normally when you click on, uh, you have a progress bar uh, somewhere where you see, but here you have it because each time an issue is closed. I also seen that several of these it work items were completed, mm -hmm. but were not closed. So we lose the over, we, we, the oversight, we don't see the global picture. Where are we, what needs uh, uh, to be done? Uh, there's, and also I started using labels yeah, for the items so that we have uh, a better. So it's it's getting organized so that we can track. Uh, I, I discussed in uh, with Ashutosh and seen things, uh, we did that uh, offline. But a lot of time is spent on fixing things that, in my opinion, are not critical for the uh, the objective we want to achieve. And as we're very short on time, and time is is really uh, uh, critical uh, here, this is what we need to to check: focus and order. Say, I fix this first, then I do that, then I do that. Otherwise, it's a huge mountain and we don't see the progress and this is very uh, demotivating. So this is just my, my two cents uh, in, that, in those areas. I, I, I might sound very directive, but um, it's based on my, my experience. So the idea of what we should do, so beside following the, the, the meeting, but at the end of the meeting where we go into the meat uh, of that is really walk through these tasks and convert them so that we have a view of what's happening and that we can decide minute per minute, this is critical, this is higher priority, this is, uh, we should work on, uh, on that. This is something we can remove from the target of this particular milestone. These are my two cents to the conversation. Okay, thank you, Jean-Marc. Thank you, Dan. Does that make sense or did I lose you because of poor communication? And 4G makes sense. Makes sense. So the first thing is, um, do we have a common understanding of the timeline that I exposed? 
Yes, we should be. Uh, uh, we should have something. Uh, we should have presentation ready by the end of next week. End of this week. Uh, what do you mean with presentation? I mean Can the slide. Then I should be. I should. I should have uh, explained you guys. I have showed you. Should have uh, showed you the demo how I'll do it in the real. I would rephrase that. By that time. It is this week we focus on content, raw material, what you're going to show. And you make just a small note, rough, no slides, not, not everything. And Friday, it's fingers off the keyboard. And then we start, we have uh, three or uh, four days left to do the actual presentation and maybe do a tweak here and there. But we need really to work sequentially. Do we agree there, Ashutosh? Yes. Uh, so for the, uh, for the presentation, should we uh, fo just focus on Maven or uh, should we include the and Node.js and Python? Yeah. No, for me, it, this week is tidy up the existing um, uh, working uh, example and then switch to Maven uh, if we manage to agree on what should be in Maven tutorial. And then on Friday, when all of that is finished, hopefully, uh, we'll be able to work on the presentation itself for the four remaining days. Uh, did and I then, understand correctly, Jean-Marc? Well, we, we share the same opinion. So this is my uh, my opinion too. We we need to have achievable goals and and uh, make them uh, uh, as good as we can. So no, not as good. They they must be achieved. Full stop. So but uh, adding Python and these kind of things. If on Wednesday everything is finished. Well, then you, we can start another milestone and say, okay, we add the Python example. The, what we know is that Friday is stop. Then we need to focus on uh, the presentation. So doing several things at the same time is a very bad habit. And the method that I'm sharing or explaining right now is called time boxing. That means that you give yourself a limited amount of time and you do as much as you can for this particular objective and you throw everything else out of it. This is time boxing. Do you, did you know that, Ashutosh? No, I didn't know. I didn't know it before. No. So when when you're you're on free time, you want to learn, look on uh, time boxing. And another interesting keyword to look for uh, later is the Pomodoro. Uh, yes, methods. I've heard of Pomodoro. The okay. Something. Yeah. <laughs> These are techniques. I don't like it that much because I, I don't work that way. But time boxing, this is a management uh, practice. Sorry, I got, I get carried away there. Back to you, yeah, Bruno. Okay. Sorry. So Ashutosh, yes, uh, it may look uh, a way too much time to spend on the Maven tutorial. You know, by Friday, five full days. Wow, why so much? You never know what can happen. We'll um, do something really different from the existing tutorial, and even if we have some kind of proof of concept that does work. We don't know how many issues we'll encounter while trying to do the tutorial. So better safe than sorry. I would prefer having a working, cleaned up, tidied up uh, example with a Maven tutorial by Friday and then start a nice presentation of the four remaining days instead of having a little bit of Python, a little bit of Node, a little bit of Maven. Not everything is looking all right and not is working perfectly well out of the box. And then we we'll make a presentation that won't be outstanding. So yes, please, uh, let's finish up with the base tutorial, the Maven tutorial, all clean, and then very, work on the documentation. Cool. Very, but very good. There is one but. Yeah. 
uh, will we all agree on what should be on the Maven tutorial and the way we should address it technically? We'll see that in a few minutes. Yeah, uh, I'm, I just would like to emphasize what you said. My calculation, so Ashutosh understands the reasoning behind and that we're in a, in a hurry with, with we did, we're not able to make you understand uh, that. My estimation at this stage is you will need about one day, uh, so uh, eight hours work globally, to finalize the first milestone. So to finalize, have something clean, uh, and so. Uh, and about two days, without really knowing the scope for finishing the Maven. All the rest is foreseen for feature creep, meaning that, oh, we forgot this, oh, we forgot there, and risk, oh, we encounter problem. I've seen that uh, you have difficulties for managing uh, Git conflicts, because now you're getting really in the, uh, uh, in, in uh, the, the, the hard, difficult part of working with Git together. And this you need to master, this will take time. So rebasing, managing conflicts and merge conflicts, uh, I mean, and, and this is built into the planning. So, sorry, Bruno, go ahead. No, 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 that's okay. Uh, yes, that's a much more detailed explanation of the why five days for just one example. Totally makes sense. Yes, we've seen, I'm currently still struggling with Git conflicts from time to time. This happens and you have to scratch your head, re-read the documentation once more, uh, try a few tutorials before getting it. Oh, yes, that's why I was getting conflict and so on. So that's not easy uh, and much more for you because of your past experience with Git, which is not huge. So that's perfectly normal. Uh, yes bit of save than sorry, as I said beforehand. Now, um, on Docs Office Hours, I've seen that you had attended the two last Asia Docs Office Hours. Thanks a lot for that. And that you made a Very demo. Um, I think on the last two, you made a demo on the two uh, weeks. And we do love that. Yes. Uh, and if you go on next Friday, this will help you rehearse the demo uh, yes. that you could do during the presentation. So, and you get direct feedback from Mark, um, who is um, a real stakeholder for this part of the documentation. So if Wonderful Mark, idea. Yeah, agrees with what you are proposing, you're good to go. That could be cool. Wonderful. And yes, Mark seemed to be very excited with what you showed uh, on the last uh, Docs Office Hours. So that's a pretty good sign that we are on the right track. Um, so yes, we should go with a build um, a Java app with Maven. I think if we manage to show him on Friday that it's working uh, on this project, he will be super thrilled about that because it's a huge documentation with difficult cryptic Docker oh. commands. And frankly, when I started with that tutorial, I said, why does it have to be so complicated? <laughs> and like, if we can get rid of that. Yes, go ahead, Jamar. Yeah, sorry. I saw it Friday. I say, how is on earth something like that possible? It's a mess. It so is. so uh, it's, it's, this is something we absolutely uh, need to do. Uh, Ashutosh, what was your opinion on the reaction? How did it go, the demo? What were uh, the questions? I, uh, firstly, I, I uh, did work on well, I work on the proposal. I the Docker commands are same, so I didn't know how to do everything. But when first time I encountered the Docker command, these Docker commands uh, while building the proposal, I was I was really struggling because it was my first time using Jenkins to Docker. But uh, when you presented your demo to the Docs Office Hour, uh, how did they react? What was interesting to them when they say, oh, okay. there it's interesting? And, and what were the questions they asked? 
the first thing um, first most interesting thing was that we were using agent uh, because right now they were build on controller right now so that was good and second point was sh keys and uh, third point was uh, there were the volumes uh, i think yes yeah mark did ask about what we'll do about volumes uh, if we sh he was not uh, objecting he was just asking if this will be done uh, that named volumes will be there in the end or not so i told that we we did have discussion about it but we haven't decided uh, in for the end part what it will be Yes, because if we keep the name volumes, uh, if a user is running the first tutorial, then the second tutorial, and we keep the same volume name, then there could be some overlapping of some configuration or something. So that could be disturbing for the end user. Uh, on the other hand, if we are using different name volumes, uh, we should maybe get rid of them at the end, you know, with the teardown command in the end. Anyway, we should do it uh, whenever we, you, we use um, the same Docker name volume or different Docker version. We should get rid of them, except if uh, users want to keep working with the same example without losing their added jobs and data. We have to discuss that. So just sorry, sorry that I, I but so very interesting question. So we need to write it down. And let's create an issue and tag it as question. Do we keep using volumes or not? Just immediately adding my point of view on, on that, because it's having a name volume will allow a user that interrupts something went wrong. He lost his connection while using a, a Gitpod or something like that. Uh, he can restart where he was and but we need to describe uh, that so the, the uh, so there are cases where name volumes are interesting but as bruno explained we need to manage them correctly and there are two use cases or two configurations that we're dealing gitpod this is not an issue because gitpod after an hour or so, boom, it disappears from the surface of the of the earth. When people are working locally, there uh, you you can you can trip on your own traces on on what you have. So we we need to think that. So volume or not, that's the question. Would be for me. Uh, the name of the of the the the, 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 the oh, I hate that word issue, but uh, you you understand what I mean. Yeah. Now see the method. Oh, that's interesting. We spent just the limited amount on it. We write it down so we don't forget it, and we can we continue and we list it. And afterwards we come back. To it and rank it and say okay we're going to think on it assemble information on it and then say okay we're going to say we need to make a note in the documentation about or to have a script that will allow people to restart ongoing mm -hmm. presentation so, so I'm, I'm trying to explain the the work method Thank you. Um, <laughs> now about the repo. Uh, so Jean-Marc, I don't think you were ever allowed to give us your um, input of what you were thinking about the repo. Uh, you told us several times that you wanted to have some tags, but you didn't get the time to explain what you had in mind really for the various example i know you don't want to see the long subdirectory names and oh. so on you want something much more compact at the root of the repo and using some tags so could you please tell us a few words about what you envision for that now this is about colors and uh writing habits but i have gray hairs and th and seen a lot of things 
So I, I, I know. So first thing, Hashutosh chose to use a sensible technique or strategy now is that to separate clearly the various experiments that he did. And we have this and we have that. It's like a file system. Each time I need to think on where is he working on and 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 so so this this brings me the the first first problem. The second the second one is that the, the well the advantage of working that way is that Ashutosh avoids conflicts. So which is it's very wise. Uh, at that way, I change this, but then fixing this issue, I'm changing that. And he experienced that with his um, uh, journal uh, there. I'd like to come back to the work journal afterwards. Uh, so it makes sense. The, the other thing is that when I come and use, because each time there's something published, I check out the PR and run it to put myself as the user to see to see how it looks like and i have a bad habit agreed but i'm allowed to do that i don't run uh, it with the dash d because ah. i in my terminal i like to see what is happening because then i see oops didn't connect i see it immediately but this means that about two thirds, especially then I hear with a small 13 inch screen, it takes about 70% of my, of my screen because it prefixes in, in a little bit irritating. Now, the most important thing about that uh, or, or what we're discussing here I want to use the demo. The first thing I'm going to, to say, and this is what the documentation is going, going to say, either check out the repository or um, click on Gitpod and so on. And, and, uh, and then what? You need to explain him and then you need to go there and you need to do this and it, you lose the people. It's a, after 15 seconds, what is this? Uh, sorry, this this nonsense. And uh, this. so what we need to aim is something very simple. Check out repository. One command. Oh, marvelous. There it is. It should take the minimal, minimal time. So uh, change rectories, if necessary, should be automated. Um, one single command that does the setup, the preparation, and starts uh, the, uh, the, the, the demo and the environment. And, and things that you did that, that worked great, were uh, like my, okay, this is the URL you should connect to to open. Git pod, there is also the click. People that don't know Git pod don't know where to go. But this is, this is a, um, a discussion we need to have when we try the demo as the end user, limited knowledge, no time. And, and so I, I shove that apart, shouldn't start discussing. So my point of view to be discussed uh, here is that we now we have several examples at different stages that are good. And I love the example where we have the, the demo job working and does it doing something. This is for me, one of the features of the, the minimal viable uh, demonstration. We have different directories. We should now move them to where they will live 
uh, in the, in the future where where they build. And uh, now I'm going to share the complete idea. These are just ideas. Is that um, the way I see the demo start? Is you go and just type demo or, or what a Jenkins demo up. What we could do is Jenkins demo up eventually with a parameter and saying uh, Jenkins demo up Maven. And, and you have everything that, and at the end it said, just connect to that, that uh, user interface and enter admin admin or whatever we decide to, to, to add to it, uh, we can, or, uh, 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 Jenkins demo uh, up, or we decide to have a Jenkins demo. Well, uh, uh, what you're writing, well, this is to be discussed. So either we try the method uh, you're writing there. It, it depends how good or how comfortable Ashutosh feels in writing bash files. Because now, as we're in a hurry, we, we should avoid putting unnecessary ballasts in Hashutosh's rucksack, because now he, he needs to run. <laughs> so either way, at this stage, because we can change it afterwards, we could make Jenkins demo up maven.sh. Do one single, and afterwards, as reuse, is one of the, the targets of DevOps. Uh, we could, this is up to you. And, uh, but we can discuss it here so that we, we don't lose too much time. I like the idea of just putting word of which tutorial you want to run. So after Jenkins up, Nathan, that yeah. seems like a good idea. I now, think I can write the script too. I okay. Used. Don't, don't forget to add the error flag because as soon as something goes wrong, it should stop. And not going, otherwise we're, we're going. And by using this technique, we're going to avoid the problems when somebody stupid like me uh, starts the, uh, the Docker compose before having executed the setup and things like that. We have a single preferred path. We we don't allow my grandchildren. I need to check that they stay on the road and don't start going all over the place. And so, I, okay, this is road, and you can go on your own, but you stay on this road. Don't start. On. So I am getting. On that away. issue, I wanted to ask you that uh, uh, that running SSH key script uh, after Docker Compose up that issue is solved. I I thought I solved that issue then. You opened the uh, issue again because I've I've yeah. seen it. It I had the impression it didn't work. Now I came on yeah, the that's what and, I and, wanted to ask. Yeah, I I, I, I don't remember. Ran it again. It's been it's been two days ago, so I I forgot what what I I need to get back there. But just to expose you the technique I use, I look, I take a note. Is it critical for our project? Is it on the critical path? Yes, no. No, because if we use the proposed the workaround, uh, then then uh, we uh, uh, then we can put that aside and solve that afterwards. See this prioritization. Uh, uh, yeah, Jean-Marc, sorry to interrupt, but as you no, are no, no, do it, do it, because otherwise we need to pull the plug. Prioritization. Uh, last week we talked about you and I talked about using a Kanban or something, uh, but yeah. then you now have implemented something with the milestones. So should we try to add something Kanban-like uh, within the repo, or is the milestone um, feature you implemented enough for the time being? The, the Kanban uses also milestone. Milestones is a simplified Kanban. We're going to to see, and uh, um, I don't have the admin rights. Ashutosh needs to learn things. I thought about that on Friday. I experimented uh, 
uh, yesterday. So the Kanban could be useful, but Ashutosh is the only one working. And we're there watching him work, which with, with is very convenient. But uh, it's a good question, uh, Bruno. My point of view on that is that uh, I proposed a simplified way on for solving it. So to see the prioritization, because in my opinion, this is where we have an issue. Uh, we forget things to do and we have a massive mental overload. And we need really now to focus sharp on where we need to go. Uh, the milestones could help. Let's try it. it. If it now, I don't remember if milestones allow to order things. I'm not uh, so sure about that. Yeah. No, no. But um, here I can look into uh, the Kanban stuff. You need to create a project at your level, and then you assign the project uh, to it. I I need to I. I did that before. Um, Me too. I don't want to lose too much time on it uh, right now. This is my opinion. I don't know what the other things are. Uh, I'd love to have that, but I don't want to lose too much time on that yet because we have the 6th of July target. So, um, even if Here, that could help with that target. I need to go offline for a second. Go ahead. I'm I still be listening, but I need to go. Okay, go ahead. Um, Ashutosh, is a Kanban something you have already studied at school? No, I haven't studied Kanban. I don't know what it is. Okay, uh, I think it's linked to agile uh, programming and so on. I've been using them for decades now, but uh, couldn't even explain where it's coming from. Anyhow, that's not mandatory for the project. That could be uh, some kind of help. You know, because it's um, a display of the task that we have to do. It's very useful when you have a group of people and people choose, oh, I'd like to work on that issue. And then we move it to the current milestone and people have to make it work before 15 days or something like that. But you're on your own, <laughs> I'm afraid. So that's maybe overkill over engineering for what we aim for. And you haven't practiced it yet. So... I don't know. I think by the 6th of July, we are not, um, we don't have to use it. Uh, just my stone should do the trick. The only problem I have with my stone is that we can't, we order uh, priorities, you know, so you will just need, okay, I have these two issues to do, but which one is a more prioritary one? I don't know. We'll do with what we have, um, if you don't mind, but yes, keep that in mind for after um, the midterm evaluation, um, maybe we could use the Kanban for the second part of the project. Um, now, I wanted to talk about the Maven tutorial because I proposed two things uh, the last weekend, but it was all fresh out of my mind and I did not discuss that with Berviant or Jean-Marc or you, Ashutosh. So I don't know if others will agree with what I proposed, and maybe I went overkill. Um, because what I proposed, the first, the very first step, which is really complicated on the existing tutorial, is just fork, clone, awesome. and launch lots of Docker commands. My idea was just launch a script that will fork and clone locally, uh, just by asking the end user its GitHub handle and its password or token. I think password, uh, GitHub doesn't use password anymore. So token. Yes, password but, is not token. Yes, I think that the token part is already addressed in the existing tutorial. But maybe that's, I don't know, uh, too much automation. Um, I don't know. What's your thoughts about that? I, I do like the script. It works nicely. Then just ask the credentials, then creates the clone version of the fork. It's nicely okay. working. And I created a 
separate branch you can let me with so that you already did that you already what? did that ashutosh you created no, a branch bruno, for... bruno propo, uh, created a draft pr uh, with the script uh, then i created uh, another branch with that script and custom ssh agent uh, docker docker file and i was able to perform the whole tutorial with that setup without docker and docker that's cool because the main breaking change i had envisioned is to get rid of docker in docker for this tutorial because it's way too risky in my point of view uh, to open this kind of world because we could get in so much trouble trying to get it to work correctly and understand what's hiding behind the docker in docker as a security uh the all of that i think we don't have the time for that and frankly i don't think it's mandatory to use docker and docker to just run a maven tutorial uh as you had already used a docker file for the controller say why not extend this mechanism and try to define an agent with a docker file and i have a meeting with infra team uh, most of the weeks and we have already discussed that thing because lots of the time in community jenkins io people say uh, how come you don't have that uh, software in the docker agent images uh, why doesn't your python image work the way i'd like to why do you provide this and that version of maven in your um image and so on that doesn't work the way it should work and the answer is always the same create your own docker image based on the supplied docker agent images do so don't try to use something else always start from the docker agent supplied by the jenkins team and then do what you have to do to have something working so that's my manifesto somehow that's what i wanted to do with this example i would like to get rid of the docker in docker and just create our own um, jenkins agent based maven image and use it uh, in the agent so it's a dedicated maven able docker agent so i don't know sorry i talked a lot but my idea was just let's get rid of docker in docker and do something simple i i i'm not going to, i'm going to try not to interrupt anymore just raising my hand go ahead Ashutosh. yes i also think docker is docker is not needed i have uh, ran the tutorial and it doesn't it doesn't need docker and docker maybe python one python one can be done without docker and docker too i think but it uses docker and docker more than this one this one doesn't use it that that much i'm just going to add some lights as i'm with jenkins with sometimes i know why it is in the demo it's mentioned mentioned it was written before the start of Kubernetes. It was at the real start of Swarm and Kubernetes. And these were experiments, uh, a bleeding edge demonstrations and the way the technicians were doing to solve what is now completely transparent with Kubernetes. And, and so these just things we can get rid of at this stage. So focus on, on the demo, as you, as you said, and Docker in Docker, Kubernetes, and these kind of things. There, this is another phase of things, and we can explain with demos to people what, how, why is it dangerous, what are the things you need to know. And this we can do as a second project or a second part of this project. This we can discuss. Bruno, yes. sorry, I thought. I no, no, that's okay. That's fine. I, I would, I'd love to hear your point of view. By the way, so that's perfect. Uh, I was thinking that for the first part of this project, we should address uh, the needs of the first persona we described. So as simple as possible, something that works, just works, and then. In the second part of the project, yes, of course, we should uh, try to address the issues or what the second persona wants to learn about Jenkins and Docker. But for the time being, we just want to have a, doc, a Jenkins instance working. It's with Docker, fine. I want to have something working at the click of a button. And I think we are approaching this goal. So yes, thank you. Berbiento, would you have anything to add regarding <laughs> this Maven tutorial? <laughs> 
Actually, what is your I point? A, I Go have ahead. a concern about because we use because we use our uh, automation. Uh, how about when the user uh, face the like errors or maybe some breaking? So how we explain the error to the user? Good point. Yes. Very good question. To which I don't have the answer. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I have the one. I have one. Is uh, and we should we should write it down and think this is an important item. So the most obvious and stupid answer is our script will never fail. So, <laughs> sorry. Um, but it's something we need to think of. Now, ah, how would you solve it, Berviento? Mm, maybe something like uh, frequently, uh, frequently asked question. Uh, for example, if the user have this error, so the solution, uh, we provide the, the solution. Uh huh. Yeah, for example, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the user get error in uh, when input the username and we provide the solution. Yes, I was also thinking that we could uh, in the script mention why the error was happening and explain that in documentation if this error comes, how to deal with it. Hmm. Uh, I think there you too have a good idea uh, that we would have the the main demo and the script, and then we would do an addendum to the documentation or somewhere what is happening behind the scene and where most common issues and and these kind of things and and where there you can explain. This script is doing that, and we chose to simplify it. In, in. That would be a very nice feature uh, uh, to have and would start feeding the second persona who wants yeah. to learn and, learn and see. Very good point, Berriento. Very good. Now I'm come back and doing my project manager again and say, <laughs> and say, is this critical for the milestone of July 6 or not? I'm afraid not. No. no. But we may not forget it. This is a feature that yes. we can create and say this is part of a milestone number X for later, but we know it and we can then very easily move it up or something like that. So cool. Thank you. Very good. Um, now, so no more pull request opened. Thank you, Jean Marc, for merging them uh, before the weekend. I um, like a clean desk. I, <laughs> yeah. I, go, I, go I, did, I did open one today. Uh, <gasps> damn it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just before the meeting. What is it That's about? Cool. Uh, it's uh, the uh, get, uh, get pod URL issue I solved it uh, this morning. Oh, the, the, the bug? Yes, yes. Uh, so, okay. Uh, I did I, make I'll a have a very Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll have a short look, but we need to focus on the... You're making my life terrible, Hashitosh. So on one <laughs> side, I want, to, I want to keep the project and everybody's nose to the target, but then you made this interesting work. Let's, let's, let's see that. So, uh, but... So, uh, we're, we're small, making small. good. It's a small <laughs> change for, of one line. <laughs> okay, yeah. good. Um, so issues should be renamed to mm, work items. Okay. Well, uh, this so, just speaking. Yeah, I know, I know. But yeah, 
Anyhow, so the main one we should focus on this week, I guess, is the build the Java app with Maven. Um, so, of course, because we'll present it, you'll present it, I should touch, <laughs> on the 6th of July, and hopefully to the Google, um, to the Docs Office Hours um, next Friday. So we'll see. It's and this fri the Friday. Friday. Uh, yeah. This is a nice target because there we have the the first show and we're going to see. So this is what we should aim for. Very good target. Okay. Yeah. Next one, end-to-end -end multi branch pipeline project creation. Forget it for the time being. We'll see that after uh, the presentation. We're going to. Yeah. So Bonus no points. hurry. No rush from the. Yeah. Uh, build a Python with Py installer, same thing. Uh, no rush on this one. We'll see that after the presentation. Uh, we have to uh, figure out. I was about to do that just before the meeting. If you, we still um, see the issues on market that you had about the SSH key generation. You know, um, we have to try it I out. I don't have that issue. I've tried it. I never okay. had it, but I have to try it nonetheless. So no, I, see I, ha I had it, but uh, the, using the long you form uh, uh, Docker Compose solve that issue and yeah. i've tried it on my local machine and get both so yes okay. definitely we have to try okay. that one to see if we can close it uh, today or not uh jean-marc i need more input from you uh on the next one which is ssh key generation git work tree is left dirty when executing the key generation script which means that we have something which is not committed which should not be committed but which appears like changed in the git tree so yeah what would you this like is... to see no it's just an observation uh oh. i have my i have my ideas how to solve it but uh here uh, we're here to discuss it so what happens when we uh generate the ssh key um there when we close this is mainly well, it happens also on Gitpod, but locally, this is very disturbing, at least for me. Uh, and good point, we need it. Will it disturb the uh, persona, the, the first persona? Um, when you generate the key, the compose file is updated. And uh, there are two new files in the secret directory. And so I get the warning, uh, there are uncommitted files uh, there. And I see uh, them. And, and uh, for nitpicking people like me, uh, it's uh, uh, mm, maybe you could, we could find uh, solutions for that. This is by playing with the git ignore. So we ignore uh, the, uh, the new file, the, sec added. the yeah. secret uh, directory. You, no, you shouldn't ignore the compose. No, no, but of course not. The, no, no, the secrets, yeah. <laughs> the secret directory. And for solving the compose, the trick we could use uh, is uh, to have um, a git compose skeleton that with the init script, and this is to force people to use the init script, you know, the Jenkins demo up a script. The first thing you would do is copy the template where it needs to go, do the SED commands to make it work for the environment, and then, and then go on. And when you do the tear down, it will delete uh, uh, all these temporary files that give the impression that, and I say why it's important. It will happen to me that I'm, I run the demos. I, I check what, uh, Ashutosh did and I'm going to do a push mm -hmm. by mistake. If somebody can do a mistake, it will happen is the definition of Murphy's law. Murphy's law, yeah. <laughs> so we need to avoid it. <laughs> okay. 
So we could. Do you know also... the story of Murphy's Law? If we have a second, Ashutosh, do you know? No, I don't know. Just after the Second World War, when the jets were starting, uh, they had to test the ejection seats. Right. And the ejection seats, and one of the problem is when you go through the canopy, uh, there is a big wind that happens, and you need to design the seats that the pilot is not hurt by that. And so they needed to know what are the forces. So what I did was having test pilots and I would slam the test pilot against a wall and see how much he was getting hurt. So is it still okay or, or so? And they would measure that way. It was, they didn't have all the gimmicks with the, the puppets and, and all that at that time. It was very, very crude. And they would, the engineer had measuring measuring tools for that and one of the plugs that you needed to put on the on the seat could be turned the two ways and so you could put it the wrong way and somebody put it the wrong way a guy called murphy or the engineer that looked at it, at it they made a test the poor guy broke his leg was in hospital and they had to tell him it was useless because we put the plug the wrong way. And so Murphy solved the problem by making, so, so by design, so if it can go wrong, it will go wrong. So Maybe we need not. to have a device that avoids that. So let's not send a test pilot to hospital for stupid decisions. Yes. Yes. It's kind of pessimistic, but yes, if something could go wrong, it will go wrong. It will so better make it safe proof. Believe me. And and another another thing, and remember that in your career, and Beviento will know something that has not been tested will fail. <laughs> Test everything. Believe me. <laughs> and there is a corollary to that. Uh, if the people that wrote the test is the same that wrote the code, it will fail too. It will fail too. Okay. Anyway, uh, we're getting so I, I yeah. still have time. I can continue, but I, I don't know about uh, other. I think I will stop the recording if you don't mind. Uh, we saw most of the subjects I, I wanted to see, and then we can make a session um, about. Um, oh, I forgot. Milestones, Kanban, whatever. If you still have a few minutes, but I think that for the... I, I have some subjects uh, that we can, the technical oh. subjects we can discuss afterwards. Oh, afterwards. Uh, so, it's oh, okay we, if we, we can the close meeting. the meeting. Yes, yes. For... And then we can. Okay. So, if you ever made it, you, the audience, to this point, congrats. <laughs> that was more <laughs> than an hour meeting. Uh, let me find the right button but and stop it. Yes, it's, go ahead. It's also very useful if you didn't write something down. You can really quickly go to to that. Yes, uh, and I experienced that, that, that. Uh, this morning the um, uh, twice the speed uh, YouTube video of uh, Docs Office Hours, and it's still pretty <laughs> efficient. So if you don't have an hour of your time, you can still watch the video in half an hour. Uh, with the subtitles, it does work. Uh, I should post it to Community Jenkins IO today or tomorrow at worst, and it should be on YouTube also very, very soon. Let's stop the recording. Bye bye. Yeah. Okay, we're without any audience now. No, I still see the recording going. Why? I clicked on the stop recording. Good luck, I didn't. Yeah. Uh, say I also something saw, bad. see the red button. <laughs>